Um, so cultural group. A uh, culture group is a group of people who consciously or unconsciously share, identify values, norms, symbols, and some ways of living that are repeated and transmitted from one generation to another. Okay? So with that, I want you, and all of you look like I have paper in front of you, I want you to draw five circles. And for those on the phone too, you can do this exercise as well. If you can draw five circles, and they're, you know, at different uh, areas of the page, <clears throat> and in them, write five of your cultural groups. What comes to mind um, for you that these are groups that you have affinity with? Shared values, beliefs, traditions, norms, what might those groups be? And they can be very general or they can be very specific. All right, so now what I'd like you to do is find two people for each circle with whom you share a cultural connection. Find two people for each circle with whom you share a cultural connection. Because this is a smaller group, you just find one person. <laughs> Make it easy for you. And, um, Fortunately, folks on the phone will be able to do this, but if we can just take um, two minutes real quick to do this. So, did any of you share more than one cultural connection with a person? Yes? yes. Well, cool. with two different people, so I guess I didn't really count. Okay. Well, that's okay. <laughs> so, do you mind sharing what were your cultural connections? Well, the, the tattoos with DeMario and then the married. Okay, the yeah. tattoos and the married. And I guess you're married too, DeMario. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so a couple of other hands went up. All right. What other cultural groups? Harmons and opera Tattoos. Tattoos too. Tattoos too. Did you know that? You knew that. Okay. <laughs> I have the Harleys. I fall into that. He has the Harleys. Yeah, I fall into that group too. Tattoos. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might almost be a majority of the group. <laughs> <laughs> no, just by looking at you. <laughs> Okay, any other cultural groups? Sure, aren't you on the Harley one too? Yeah. Harley? Okay. <laughs> this is a badass group. Who okay. <laughs> <laughs> knew? All right. Um, did anyone have a hard time actually filling out all five circles? Yeah. Yes. Yes? Why do you, why do you think so? And you on the phone as well, did uh, you all on the phone have a hard time filling out all five circles? Yeah. Okay, so... So several people said yes, including at least one person on the phone. Why? Why do you think you did? I don't really think of it anything that I have as being a cultural anything. Yeah. Like it's just really common. Like the tattoo thing, that's so common. Being white, of course, is pretty common. Okay. You know, the, those kinds of things. So and being a woman, uh -huh. I mean, those are the kinds of things that I chose. So it's like... Okay. What else? Yeah. So if you didn't hear on the phone because um, those groups seem to be so common, women, white, tattoos, <laughs> didn't seem different. So, okay. What else? Anyone else have trouble filling out five? Uh -huh. <laughs> and for the same or different reasons? Um, I don't know. For me, I think it was more just trying to define it. I mean, you know, is, is that a hobby or is that a culture? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, I, I was struggling with that. Okay, whether it's a hobby or a culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, woman, someone said woman, is a cultural group, right? Men is a cultural group. And white is a cultural group. Um, Latino, Latina, etc. And then we have subgroups within groups, right? So I think it's interesting that um, that's, that that for some folks it was difficult because those cultures that we actually live and work and operate in every day, we kind of just mainstream them, right? And not necessarily thinking that they're different. Whereas if we're interfacing with someone from a different cultural group than ours, they may or may not see our different cultural representation. And if I am someone who, um, so um, as a woman of color going into services and my caseworker is white, for me personally, I'm going to see that cultural difference very quickly. 
and I'm going to look for, is she going to understand where I'm coming from? Um, is she going to judge me? Is she going to talk condescendingly to me? So we, in those positions of quote unquote power, compared to people who come in for services, and we're not cognizant that we actually do carry a culture, a culture of our workplace, a culture of how we look or how we speak and the jargon that we use is actually continually being transmitted to the people that we're serving. So thinking about how much um, is, uh, uh, is bias also embedded in that is just kind of a question to throw out there. Next question, how many of you put your profession? Okay, three, four people, all right, four people. Anybody on the phone put your profession? No. 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 Okay. The weird thing is, is too, is sometimes you have a cultural, a personal cultural, you know, experience when you're, like, at home. Yeah. Compared to what your experience is going to be and how you identify yourself at work. Yes. Totally mm -hmm. different sometimes. Exactly. And and so that is sometimes um, people call it shifting, right? Um, also fluidity of our experiences, right? And we just go in and out of it naturally without necessarily thinking about it. And um, my, we, my husband and I were talking about this the other night with, with our daughter um, around, you know, again, so we talk a lot about race, culture, um, you know, shifting. And, um, and so my husband was reminding my daughter, who is um, 17, about, you know, we're, you know, telling her the importance of getting ready for college and all of that and, um, and, and defining yourself and all of that, so continuing those conversations. And then he gave my daughter an example. He said, Savannah, do you remember um, one day when I took you to work and then you told me later, this is when she was little, and you told me later, Dad, why did you act so weird? <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> because she's used to her dad being you know, funny and cracking jokes and all of this stuff, and he does that to a certain extent at work, but way not as much as at home, right? He's very playful, right? And so that's the daddy she was used to. So when she goes and he works in the city of Denver, and he's like, you know, you know, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, how we all shift. It was strange, right? So it doesn't mean we're not the same people, but we know how to shift. And so thinking about how do we bring our consciousness to that, and also when don't we shift, when maybe we should, right? When aren't we adapting, when we know we're not getting the kind of responses from people, that there's some kind of barrier there, <clears throat> and so maybe I need to shift the way I'm talking to somebody, or the tone that I'm using, or the cadence, right, uh, of talking. Um, and some of you found matches. And did anything surprise you in filling out your circles? Other than some people had a harder time filling them out. Folks on the phone, did anything surprise you? No. Okay. So everybody knows themselves really well. Okay, good. 